Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Utah Forge podcast, Forging Ahead with Geothermal Energy, where we ask experts important questions about the amazing role of geothermal energy. I'm your host, Christopher Catiz, and joining me as always is my co-host, Professor Stuart Simmons, a geologist and one of the scientists with the Utah Forge project. Hey, Stuart. Hey, Christopher. It's great to be back again. Yeah, it is. So for the listeners, I just want to remind everyone that Utah Forge is a major research project funded by the U.S. Department of Energy and based here at the University of Utah. We're working on alternate ways to harness the power of geothermal energy, an important renewable energy source. Yeah, it is important. And today we're going to discuss the concept of an enhanced geothermal system, which is just commonly referred to as EGS. Well, that sounds interesting. I always learn a great deal from you. And I guess my first question is, well, what exactly is an enhanced geothermal system? Yeah, good question. But first, maybe I think we need to understand a little more about geothermal systems in general. Like what makes a geothermal system and what are the key ingredients? That's probably a perfect starting point. So a geothermal system is made of heat, water, and permeable rock. The heat comes from deep in the Earth's interior, rising into the crust with magmas. And the water comes from rain and snow that falls on the surface. The permeable rock is a network of tiny open spaces inside the rocks made of cracks and crannies that are filled with groundwater. When this groundwater becomes heated, for example in volcanically active areas, the hot water is buoyant and rises through the rock. This is a natural geothermal system, and geothermal systems occur in geologically active areas. The most famous of these is Yellowstone National Park. The geothermal system is what creates the boiling hot springs and geysers that make the park so famous. Okay, so that's a natural geothermal system, but what makes an enhanced geothermal system? Well, to start, we always have to have a volume of hot, dry rock. That's the kind of rock we encounter everywhere beneath our feet. Sometimes you have to go very deep to find it, but it is always there. And by dry, I mean that there are no open fractures or pore spaces that are naturally filled with fluid. Next, we have to drill wells, one for injection and one for production. We use these wells to produce hot water and geothermal energy. So the first well is used to introduce and inject cold water into the ground. I should add that there's nothing special about the cold water, and we can use any nearby water that is abundant and readily accessible. It could come from a nearby shallow well, a river or stream, or even a lake. The amount of water is not that great, and it will be recycled. But, Stuart, doesn't that injection of cold water need to have someplace to go? Oh, yes, absolutely. Without question, the most important ingredient that needs to be developed or created is that permeability, which I just mentioned. For EGS, this takes the form of a network of interconnected cracks or fractures. The thing about these fractures is that they are tiny and just barely open. So once the cold water penetrates into the rock, it seeps through the fractures, heats up with time, and eventually it is pumped to the surface through that second well, which is called the production well, as a geothermal fluid. Well, to me, it sounds pretty simple, and I'm assuming is a great way to produce energy. Yes, it does sound simple. But there are many challenges, and creating permeability is a long-standing topic of research that has involved a large number of dedicated engineers and scientists. And I have to say, we still have much to learn. But returning to the permeability, in a natural geothermal system, hot water moves upwards over a distance of, say, several kilometers or several miles. But EGS permeability is developed over a much shorter distance. The current working concept is that injection and production wells are closely spaced and run parallel to one another. They are only a few hundred feet apart. The primary reason for this is because it is very difficult to open a crack and make it permeable over much longer distances. Okay, so let me see if I've got this right. For an enhanced geothermal system, we need to create permeability 
that's made up of a network of tiny cracks. Then we inject cold water that seeps through the network, getting hot, and then the liquid is pumped out through the production well to turn a turbine and create energy. Is that about right? That's it. And making this technology viable could be a game changer. Geothermal energy is found literally everywhere under our feet. It's clean, renewable, and inexhaustible, which is why the research we're doing at Utah Forge is so important. And we're going to talk about Utah Forge in our next podcast. This has been really interesting, but that's our time for today. If you'd like to learn more about geothermal energy, visit our website, utahforge.com, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. On behalf of Stuart Simmons, I'm Christopher Catiz. Until next time, thanks for listening to Forging Ahead with Geothermal Energy.